Lord. How many are glad to be here? Hallelujah. How, how many, how many God has been good to you? The Bible says nothing that evil the Lord say so. God has been you for any time. He's going to say so. If we go to any time, he's going to say so. And if the blood is running warm in your veins, he's going to say so. Come on, bless him. Come on, give God a head clap. Come on, give your head clap. Praise God, praise God. I thank God for being here today, for being invited here from the Apostle and Bishop Parker. And I thank God for you, the people of God, who are being here today, coming by way of uh, Lawrenceville, uh, by way of Love and Liberty Community Church, where the, the pastor is Bishop uh, Ernestine Davis. And I'd like to greet you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to be before you briefly. I'm just going to drop a few thoughts in your, in, in your mind concerning temperance. And I, if you would, I want you to follow me over into Galatians, the fifth chapter and the 23rd verse. Amen. Oh, thank you. All right. When you have it, signify by saying amen. Amen. I'm still coming. I'm still coming. I got it down. I'm just going to read one. Galatians 5 and 22. And the Bible says as follows. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long trust, and gentleness, goodness, faith, Meaning temperance. Against such, there is no law. Yes, yes. Today, uh -huh. I want to explain and define basically the word temperance, which means self-control. Uh -huh. uh -huh. That means to control yourself. Yes. Uh -huh. Now, it's so, it's so, it, it, it's so important yes. to, to, to bear and to embrace this particular fruit because of the promise. Yes. And any time... God gives us a promise. Before the promise, there's going to be warfare. Uh -huh. yeah. Somebody say amen. Amen. And, and, and determined, and it is determined by how you respond uh -huh. will determine when you receive what God has for you uh -huh. or you miss it. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and the enemy or the, or the, the adversary of self-control uh -huh. I'm going to use two points. Is fear and frustration. Somebody say fear. Fear. Now fear, we find fear in during the time of Moses when it was time for Moses to, uh, had told the twelve spies to go over into the land of Canaan and bring back a report. Somebody said report. And there were ten that came came back with a report, and their report was through the eyes of fear. Yeah. And, and, and fear told them that we're too small. Uh -huh. yeah. We will be defeated. Yeah. See, the thing about fear, uh -huh. fear will make you look at your circumstances. Uh -huh. Your fear will make you look at your condition yeah. and make you think that you're not able. Yeah. It'll make you think that you're inadequate. Yeah. Uh -huh. It'll make you think that, that you're not a grasshopper. Uh -huh. yeah. See, fear will tell you that. See, but then there's two that came back that was Joshua and Caleb, uh -huh. and they said that we're more than able to overcome. Somebody say overcome. Overcome. Now faith is the, is the opposite of fear. And see, faith, wherein fear makes things make things look big uh, in your sight, but faith will make things look small. Yeah. And the reason faith will make things look small because the God in you is big. Yeah. And, and because the God in you is big, everything around you is small. Yeah. And, and, and so it's so important. Faith is to look at faith to God, and how do you do that? It's by reading the word. And the, the, uh, the, the one, one guy told me that I heard this said that the more you, you, you believe, the more you read, the more you believe. The, the, the more you believe, the more you 
when you read. And see, and, and the more you read, the more your faith grows. And the more your faith grows, the more your confidence grows. And the more your confidence grows, the more your eyes grow with God. And, and, and the more the devil becomes small. What we the Bible says that he's under my feet. That not can bother bother you because we have dominion over the devil. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now the other element um, uh, that is opposed to uh, 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 self control is frustration. Yeah. Now we're going with Moses again. Now we're going over. We're going to the point where the children of Israel are at the brink. Yeah. They were at the brink of their destiny. Yeah. Everything that God had told them that they were, they were going to the land of milk and honey. They were going over. They had been journeying a long time. But now they're at that place where they're strong. Yeah, yeah. Has anybody been in trouble? Oh, yeah, yeah. Has anybody been tested? Yeah. See, when you've been tested, this is your place uh -huh. where, where, where your faith uh -huh. has to be activated. Yeah. The question is what you're going to do. Come on. When, yeah. when, when troubles come your way, uh -huh. when, you open up, when you open, you look at your bank account and the money's not there, uh -huh. and you believe in God, but dead eyes are still there, what you going to do? Yeah. It takes faith in God. But let me tell you what Moses did. Uh -huh. God told Moses uh -huh. to, 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 to speak to the rock. Yeah, but Moses, let me tell you something. Let me go back. Let me tell you something. The thing about fear and frustration, uh -huh. the portals that causes this particular thing uh -huh. is your ears and your eyes. Uh -huh. It's like your ears and your eyes. Uh -huh. And see, your ears and your eyes is, 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 is along with the works of the flesh. Uh -huh. Let me tell you something. In order to get to the nine fruit of the spirit, uh -huh. you must go through. 17 works of the flesh. You must go through those mountains. You must go through pride. You must go through discontent. You must go through bitterness. See, some people, let me tell you something. One of the reasons that God has and uh, bringing this message forth is because God, we are at a brink. You're at a place in your life. You're at your promised land. And there's some things that you must shut off. There's some things you must let go of. See, that's what happened with Joshua. See, when Joshua came to his promised See, the angel told him he got to take off his shoes. On, you might ask the little preacher, why did he have to take off his spiritual shoes? Uh -huh. Well, the problem is when, when he started the journey, those shoes was new. See, but now God don't want his old shoes to go to a new place. See, see so what God is saying to us today is that what you what you have, God wants you to set aside. That pride, God wants you to set aside. That fear, God wants you to set aside. That discontent, God wants you to set aside. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, 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 and, and with Moses, because of Moses, because of the frustration of the people, Moses allowed his ears and his eyes to cause him to react and disobey God and miss his blessing. Jesus! Hello, somebody. It's very important in this day and time for us to be controlled. In control. The Bible says that a person who controls their own spirit is, 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 is stronger than the mind. It's so important to have self-control. Because in self-control, see, the Bible says that it's not what goes in your mouth. But it's what comes out your mouth that defiles a man. So God is looking not, not for what someone do to you. But God is looking at what you do, how you respond. Because it is how you respond will determine how you can be blessed. Hallelujah. Come on, your God is let down. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the day. Come on, bless the day. Now we go on to James. Where it talks about the mind. James talked about it. James said that it is important to be swift in here and so to speak. Even Jesus speaking that way, he talked to the disciples. And he told the disciples to be careful how you hear, Apostle. Because he said, How you hear will determine how you respond. Because if you hear wrong, you respond wrong. See, that's what, that's what Moses did. Moses heard wrong. See, because Moses heard his emotions. Moses heard his ears. Moses heard the people instead of hearing God. And he did all of that and missed out on God. Now, what you gonna do? Are you gonna come this way to, to go promise that and miss out on God? Our mouth is so important. The Bible 
it. It's in a new leaf. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so, so it is so important to, to govern your tongue. And how do you govern your tongue? With the word. And it has been said that with your relationships, to follow your heart when it comes to love. To follow your heart. But I didn't find that because the Bible said the heart is deceitful. That's what you're going to be wicked. Above all, who can know it? So you must govern your emotions. You must govern your heart with the word. Because look at Peter. Peter was, was on the boat. And then the stones were raised. Boston. 